Hey, welcome to this video on how to do Google material design animations with Webflow. Uh, at first, um, I gotta apologize that I missed a couple of deadlines here. Uh, I originally wanted to make this video about this uh, Zai device by uh, Timeula, which can be used to track uh, multiple projects at once, but, um, well, it, Arrived a bit late, it's from Kickstarter, so I got a bit out of schedule. So if you do not know Webflow, it's a browser-based application um, for building high-resolution prototypes. Uh, it even has some um, capabilities um, to build actual websites, so they have a CMS feature now and um, they are improving um, constantly. But it's not the um, prototyping tool um, that you would commonly think of. It's not comparable with a tool that has its uh, focus on animation, for example. It's free, as far as I know, at least the limited version, so if you're not familiar with it, just give it a try. If you haven't heard about Google Material Design, uh, it's a design language introduced in 2014, now used in all the uh, Google products, and it uses a flat layout and um, visual depth hierarchies to distinguish um, the importances and um, relations of the elements in your design. What I want to show you now is the radial fill, which is a generally used pattern in material design. For example, uh, they use it in the buttons and uh, basically on most spaces that you can click on. If you really want to get into the details, I can really recommend um, their design guidelines. I put the link in the description. Um, they basically wrote down everything about Google Material Design. Um, from um, the behaviors to the durations, tweening curves, when which element appears, and so on. So you can really get lost into it, but it's prepared very well, so check it out. So I think this uh, episode is going to be pretty straightforward, so I just say, let's get uh, right into it. Alright, so this is the um, Webflow dashboard and I just create a new project right now. And select the blank canvas, call it Material Design. And I thought um, this might be um, an example of a mobile project. So I select this mobile portrait canvas, uh, which basically just um, sets the width of, of the canvas. So we have a responsive um, canvas or a responsive tool to um, build our layouts here. Um, this is going to look a bit like the Google stuff, but not too much, I think. Um, I'm very much going to um, align on this color tool right now. Um, the color tool is also part of the material design and um, you can create color palettes with it and uh, see in real time how it might look like in an example layout and I'm no, not going to be very picky here. but. Um, I had to prepare one asset for this episode, so um, I just stay in a blue color range in order to have everything matching. And basically this is also sort of how our demo will look like in the end. So we have two sections and a radial uh, button in the center. Okay, so um, we start by adding a diff block to our canvas and call it bottom half. This div block has to be um, positioned absolute, so we'll put it on the bottom 
corner. But since there's not going to be a perfectly um, made layout CSS wise, I'm really focusing on the animation right now and um, leaving out things like um, correct CSS properties and stuff. So I just give it a fixed height right now instead of maybe 50%. Just say 700 pixels, the width is 100%, and then we give it a fill color. We pick this. Well, <laughs> we don't see the color right here, so we just say it's a very light gray. And then we assign another color to the body background so we call this body give this a bit darker gray so we can separate these two elements and now it's time to uh, insert the radial button in the center so I'm again dragging um, the diff block to the canvas calling it circle button and giving it um, dimensions of 60 by 60 pixels position it absolute and just dragging it down I know this is not the cleanest way but it totally fulfills this purpose so dragging 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 you can also use shift and the arrow keys to make 10 pixel jumps. Oops. Okay. All right. Of course, this is now a rectangle. Um, I'm going to give it a color from the color tool now, which is the primary color here. Just copy and paste it. and add a radius to the border so now we have a circle then I'm going to add some text call it circle plus it's just going to replace a plus icon. I'm using text right now. This has to be centered. Then I'm giving it a bit of margin to the top. Okay, just formatting it. All right. Um, now this is basically the button the user clicks on. Um, but what I want to do is have a circular background animation so I want to have a lighter blue in the background in a circular shape expand over the top area how I do this is by using an SVG and scaling it up so I'm going to add an image right now which is going to be the SVG and I prepared this so I'm just uploading it right now, it's called circle. Okay, I'm calling it circle image. Give it a, the same dimensions. And in order to have it scale properly, I have to apply a little trick here. So I'm going to place this image inside a div block 
so I can scale both elements and then have a multiplication of what's possible in Webflow. I'll explain that later when it's when I'm doing it. So I'm calling it circle image div and place it right there. The circle image div has the same dimensions again. All right, and now I'm place, positioning this uh, div absolute and at the same position where our um, circle button already is. So right now I cannot select it, so I'm using this view and then I have it and the position is here and I'll just copy and paste it just to save some time. 185. So just to have the right um, order of elements, I have to specify some z-indexes here right now where um, the image as well as its container is at the lowest position. So I give it a zero. Next would be the bottom half. All right. And this gets z-index one. And the button is at the topmost position, so it gets the Z index 2. Now the um, layout is uh, ready, I think, um, so we can now start animating it. So I thought it would be cool to have this icon spin a little bit and at the same time expand the background. So we do this by adding this interaction and defining a trigger, which is click on the same element so we do not have to check this. First click and then we add a rotation of negative 225 degrees and in my experience uh, 200 milliseconds is a bit too, too fast here so I'll select 300 milliseconds and that's fine so far for the second click, which is basically reverting the animation, um, I'm going to specify exactly this. So just click on rotate, okay, and then it automatically defines rotate to origin. So we do not have to specify another degree um, number. So you can preview this animation and it works. All right, this is the first thing that happens. And we can rename this animation now to have a better overview at the later time to rotate and, sc and scale. And we have mul multiple triggers. So the first trigger is the click and um, we have this rotation. The next trigger will be also a click. So each animation, even within one interaction, can have multiple triggers and it's only one click but it um, launches or fires different multiple animations. So now we want to scale the background and as I already mentioned um, Webflow is a bit limited in its scaling. It only offers scaling of five times the original dimensions which is oftentimes not enough, even, especially in uh, this case where you want to scale across the entire background. Um, in this demo, we only have a mobile back canvas, but um, this can also be used on desktop where we have much larger spaces. So um, there this um, limitation might not be enough. So this is why I put it in a container, which I'm also going to scale and by this we have a multiplication of the original scale amount. So, so in this case um, we want to affect different elements. First step is to scale the image. So we define the circle image here. Oh, sorry, I see. oh I just saw I have a typo there, never mind. Um, scaling 
five times. Okay, so you now can see that this uh, image gets scaled, but it does not cover the entire background. Just leave it there, but we need to adjust the duration so all the animations happen at the same time. And for the second click again, we have to um, scale back to the origin. Scale done 300 and done done. So this is the first animation for the for the scaling. And then we're doing the same just again for the for the container of this image. Effect different element image div and again transform scale five. 300. Just uh, don't be confused by this right now. You'll see it in a second. Done. And second click, scale 1, 300. Done. Done. Alright, now so we can uh, just try it out and look if everything is working. And as you can see, by clicking on this icon, you have a radial fill in the background and the icon does some turning around. I think maybe this uh, spinning around thing is a bit too much so we can adjust it in uh, no time. As remember it was the first interaction we uh, set up to the rotation. And we can just set the degrees amount a bit lower. Just um, the important thing is that it looks like this X shape right here. So we have the right effect. So we just maybe have it like this, which is 135. Okay, let's go. Data origin. Oh, and it's uh, the wrong duration here. So I'm fixing this as well. Done, done. Done and preview. Yeah, it's a little bit better, I think. So, what you just saw is how to create this uh, background fill animation with an F SVG graphics file in Webflow. Of course, this can be adapted to um, any other design element of your choice, for example, a button or Anything else you want to have this fill in, you can connect it to um, the click position to have it even more realistic and dynamic. And I think it's a nice workaround for um, this tool. I really like using Webflow and um, if you want to stay natively in one tool, it's maybe a solution just to um, get everything done and do not um, need to, for example, use GIF animations or something like that. So that's already it for this video. Um, I'm still trying out lots of stuff, so if you liked or disliked any aspects of this video, please let me know. I'm also keeping the details on a very basic level right now, just to get a feeling of uh, what you guys like and what you guys want to see. So if there's any topic you want me to go more in depth, uh, please tell me. Um, if you like this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. That would be much appreciated. Thanks for watching and uh, see you soon.